Yeah, we did uh, quite a lot. Actually, if I do take that that project as well, um, we ramped up and scaled the team from initially in Malaysia, initially five people to over 100 over, the, over a couple of months. Wow. It was a pretty rapid um, scale and growth. We actually had to continuously change the roles in the team because as we had new team members coming in, we had to change a little bit the reporting lines um, and also adjust, depending who else came in, what additional experience we were able to recruit into the team. But yes, I think as good leaders, we need to continuously keep an eye in terms of what small changes lead to better results for the overall team. Yeah, no, exactly. And I actually find that that's, that's a compelling use for AI as well, too, because you don't know what you don't know about people, right? So there is software out there that can actually identify the skills um, and, and really kind of identify like the, um, the, the complementary skills that you don't even realize as a leader people have, right? They may not have told you, but it might be information that the company has because it's on their resume, it's in their background, it's in their certifications. Um, there was one example that I came across and it was just, um, they were looking for people who had a math background and it caught my attention because I have a math background, right? But they were working as customer service, but with a little bit of a, an additional training, they were actually able to move them into a data strategist role and uh, increase their salary three times just by knowing that those skills existed and yeah. realigning them. And so that's a fantastic yeah. way to retain people is how can you take those skills that, that are innate to that person and then redeploy them into something that's actually going to be future focused and it's going to benefit mm -hmm. the company more than where they actually enter the company. Yes, absolutely. Well, that's a fantastic story because, you know, we have so many new roles that are being created, uh, particularly in the STEM sector, right? There are so many new uh roles and um, responsibilities that didn't exist in the past. So people not necessarily bring five or 10 years experience in those things, but also because the STEM sector is growing so rapidly, we will need to be able to find people who can transfer their skills and knowledge into the STEM sector. And, and I guess it's funny uh, that you mentioned that because I guess I was one of those, because um, my background is not a technical background. I started business administration. But I've always worked in strategy and in strategy, what we're after, it's about finding solutions, solving complex problems, right? Breaking it down into sub elements, analyzing it, finding solutions, and then implementing a solution. And I think why I was able to make the transition into managing engineering projects, it's because it's the same. It's about managing a complex project, breaking it down into sub elements, analyzing it, finding a solution, and putting it together into an overall plan. Um, so I think it was that capability that I was able to transfer. And you're right. If we dedicate more time with our employees to helping them transfer the skills that they have already, we could actually multiply uh, the capability that already sit in our organization. Yeah. And that's the thing. Like sometimes the people who have these capabilities don't even realize how valuable they are. And that's where it's like, how can you supercharge it? And we were talking before about, you know, when when you're working from home, especially women, they tend to have like a smaller network. They don't necessarily get out uh, to, you know, events or they show up to networking agreements or, or events. They don't necessarily present themselves in the same way that a man would, right? Um, it, it's really just the reality of, of gender. So this is a way that people can become more visible in a way that's much more personalized and comfortable. And, and that's a way that as leaders and managers, we can really kind of help women overcome this perceived barrier of re remote work. Because personally, I think it is a perception, right? 